Here we go. A revealing racist rant in L.A. Now, for those of you who didn't hear it, uh, this took place a little while ago. I'm going to show this here. Video contains offensive language, so we'll see if we get banned for it because a AP did not. Mm. I want to say that the actual recording kicks in around here. So L.A. City Council in turmoil after an audio leak. Outraged protesters called for the resignation of three Los Angeles City Council members after audio of them making racist remarks leaked. Mm. The private recorded remarks by council members Nuri Martinez, Gil Cedillo, and Kevin De Leon included mocking the black son of a white councilman. This white guy with a little black kid who's misbehaved. The kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. I am still trying to wrap my head around <laughs> everything that was said and everything that is happening. Now, to be fair, to be fair, um, has anyone out there, I'm, I'm sure, you know, show of hands, every single person in the chat is going to say yes. Have you ever been in a room with somebody who should never have been a parent? And watched their child go ape shit. Yes. And then been there for the conversations after said parent and child leave. Mm -hmm. This is nothing. Go to Chuck E. Cheese's. You'll see that shit. Oh in space. God! Holy shit! Oh yeah, go to Chuck E. Cheese's. Or if you're from Michigan, Major Magics. It's coming back. It is. Yeah. yeah fuck that. They opened one of them. Why? What's wrong with that? It's dumb. You're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up going to Major Magics because I they actually had good pizza, Chuck E. Cheese's balls. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese is terrible stuff. Yeah, it's disgusting. Not to mention the freaky animatronic mouse. Just, yeah, just not a fan. Light it on fire or kill it with fire. Yeah, I'm not a fan so of that at all. So that private conversation, which virtually everyone who listens to it can identify with what is being said. Yeah. Okay. Just because she called the kid a monkey. And he happens to be non-melanin challenged magically. It's a racial thing? It's a racial thing. Well, You know how many listen. times I've called my own kid a monkey? Everyone here has a little bit of racism in them. It's just the way it works. And, and if you're one of those people that'll sit there and, I swear I'm a stack of Bibles, oh. I'm not. You're lying to yourself. It's called life experience. It is. Uh, stereotypes don't spring up out of the ether unless they're being taught to you by professors in higher education. <laughs> or you see it in the real world. Uh, that's all what the, I'm saying. All the craziness going on. You're like, what it's the like, fuck? We know that where stereotypes come from because it's a shared reality that we can all laugh at. The only fake stereotypes I know of that have caught on are the ones being taught to people by Marxist professors. That is correct. White privilege. Yeah. <laughs> Systemic istophobic. Listen, there is no white privilege. No. There's only having a father privilege. Exactly. Uh, and listen, if you are born in a family that, you know, you're basically, you only have one parent, you're a single mother, yep. you're literally starting out at a huge disadvantage in the race of life. Yep. And some people don't have the IQ. Or the drive to, to, to overcome that obstacle. Exactly. Especially if, you know, many of them congregate in inner cities. Mm -hmm. Over 75% of a ter of a certain non-melanin-challenged demographic gives birth to their children out of wedlock. Not to be confused with the 61% of all pregnancies that get murdered yep. in said demographic. Actually, the most dangerous place for a young non-melanin-challenged child to be is in its mother's womb. To, uh, statistically saying. speaking, <laughs> those numbers are pretty grim. But you put all that together, and we know the facts of fatherless homes, there's no racial component here. Nope. There just happens to be a stereotype that happens to be true. Well, like, <laughs> a few years back, I went and I sat in on a um, Detroit school board meeting. Oh, God. And literally, oh God. <laughs> literally 45 minutes of nothing but blame the white guy. Oh, uh, why am I not shocked? You know, despite the fact that they receive more tax dollars than yep. any of the other school districts in the suburbs around Detroit. Mm -hmm. And that money historically just dis disappears. Nobody's found culpable yep. for missing money. 
And you know who stole it all? The politicians of color that they elect. Correct. And, and I am just amazing. I, I literally, I'm in there like, oh my God, they, they just don't, they just can't see it. Yep. They've bought into the lie mm-hmm. because it's easier than taking responsibility and saying, you know what? We fucked up. We fell for LBJ's plan to, you know, make stunning and brave African American gentlemen vote Democrat for 200 years. All because. And he actually said that. Yeah, he did. All because, you know, you can have welfare, but there can't be a man in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was offered to everyone, regardless of race, color, and creed. And guess who jumped on it to the rate of 75%? Well, there's two reasons for that. If there's no man in the house, then that woman will need to call the police and be more de- de- you know, dependent on the system for protection. Exactly. And she'll need the financial resources. Yep. The government is my real baby daddy. So in reality, you're, you're, you're getting rid of the safety net and the provisions that men used to provide. The government's not doing this for yep. these women. And is it any shocker that these women of today are just going fucking berserk? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. You remember when that used to be bigotry, but now we don't even know what a woman is? <laughs> That's going to haunt them for a long time. Oh, man. It is. Yeah, we, we couldn't tell you what a woman was. And then Roe v. Wade got overturned. And then that was a war on women. Uh, but then all of a sudden, you know, we had to go back to, oh, oh that, that doesn't work anymore because we have uh, the Transformers over here. And we want them all to compete in college sports and, you know, diddle kids. So we need to take care of that. And then, oh, oh, we we need the draft still. Okay, all, all biological men then. Yeah. What? That's right. We? Not me. I'm zipper tits. Well, the, here, here it is right here. All right. The reason that they talked about the, the draft for the trans community is because uh, they missed the recruiting by 40%. Yeah. And when you average it out, it's... Between the services, it's like twenty five percent. They're reading the the handwriting on the wall. If this continues, they're going to have to draft people. Yep. And guess what? You can dress up like a pig, <laughs> but <laughs> if you have a, uh, if you have or had a worm dangling yep. between your legs, the ball of worms, you are going to get boxed up and sent over to disposability land. <laughs> Uh, but that's just a conspiracy theory. Uh, you can say that all you want. <laughs> I've read the old op orders in regards to World War Three. Oh, and, I know, I know. And all of the... I'm not the one over here saying chromosomes are a myth. No, I, I When I say it, I'm making fun of people who actually think it. <laughs> and, and you want to watch them really freak out? And I've done this a couple times. Oh, this ought to be good. I'm like, they're talking about all the crazy stuff. I'm like, good, good. Could you uh, give me an example in nature other than human beings for that? <laughs> Could you please point to any other animal that we have yep. uh, that, you know, has a male, female, but s- somehow there's 120 different sexes? Or Yeah, totally. Yeah. No? Yeah, when you, was you the last can't... time you saw a sea otter with a sea otter made of vagina dilating it with a stick? Yeah. And then how are all of these 120 genders expressed with... Dishwasher safe hardware that looks like a penis. <laughs> oh man! You know when you when you sign up for your zipper tit surgery, there's only one option on the form for the transition. That's it. Isn't it amazing how that works? I know. <laughs> Non-binary is not one of the options. No, it's not. Just in Let's, case you were curious. And it's already all covered. Yeah. As- or gay, asexual, heterosexual. And that, uh, hermaphrodite. Well, well, well no, when you're talking about are exceptionally when you're talk- rare. Oh, when you're, when you're, I'm talking about the, the the transition surgery. When you are one side, you only have one option. That's right. You don't have 74. No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. And here's the part that tell Tumblr that and that, watch the reese continue. Like I literally had to like quit talking to a lot of my liberal friends because they were. You know, talking about this, uh, you know, gender fluid poor yep. shit and critical race theory. I'm like literally looking at them and I remember I, I 
taught, I told this to one of my buddies. He was going on. I'm like, have you ever read the diary of Anne Frank? <laughs> it's just like, well, you know, everyone did that in high school. Yeah, yeah. I was in, yeah, you read it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the difference between you and me is you be the guy narking out Anne Frank to go to the fucking smokehouse, and I won't. You're damn right. And they, they got really butthurt about it. It's but it's true, absolutely though. true. It's true. The reason why they don't want to hear that is because they're the ones pointing a finger while three point back at them and yelling, Atsine. That's why I always... <laughs> Fuck off! All four. You get the fucking whole knife hand of doom. You're damn right. Oh, I said doom. Doom. All right, you ready for this? Yes, I am. You ready for how uh, we're going to snort some Chuck Blow <laughs> and uh, figure out exactly how... The Democrats plan to spin three Hispanics engaging in what they call istophobic tree. I have a theory about the future of America that I don't want to come true. It's a theory that worries me and that I've written about that with the browning of America, it's a little overdone on one side, white supreme pizza could simply be replaced by or buffeted by a form of light supremacy in which fairer-skinned people perpetuate a modified anti-blackness rather than eliminating it. Because they're running out of the white supreme pizza, yep. and they need to build another boogeyman. That is what's taking place here. And they are... <laughs> I think this, uh, this is summed up beautifully by... You know, there's a lot of Venezuelan migrants coming here now. Yep. And Biden's new Remain in Mexico policy that he's decided to introduce targets them specifically. Gee, I wonder why. He's going to let all the other ones that didn't come from a socialist shithole into the country. Mm. Huh. I mean, there, there has to be some reason. I just can't quite wrap my I, brain around it. It might have something to do with uh, <laughs> control. Uh, it might have something to do with the fact that people who just came from a socialist shithole won't vote Democrat. Yeah, that too. And, and listen, the Hispanic community, uh, they're getting pretty done with oh, yeah. the whole Democratic horse shit. And that's really, I think, where a lot of this is coming from. They're seeing a huge swing, and it has been continuous since 2008, of the Hispanics toward the conservatives in the voting booth, and they are terrified well, it, of what listen, that means. How many times are the Democrats going to promise shit to the minorities, never deliver, yep. don't even talk to these people for three and a half years, and then magically, six months before an election, we care about you again. How many fucking times are they going to fall for that horse shit before they're like, hey, fuck off? Well, apparently they've been falling for it since the 60s. Yeah. And, and look still what we have. are still overwhelmingly falling for it. That's right. And all of the blue cities... Yep. Our sh fucking shitholes. Yep, and, and that's why when we released our old pop culture video, Dear Minorities, You Are Still Slaves, and we got hate mail for it, oh, you yeah. and I were reading it laughing our asses off. I'm not a fucking slave. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't, I don't, I don't. Like, well, you know, if you throw a rock into a pack of dogs and one of them yelps, chances something. are that's the one you hit. Yep, you hit somebody. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's pathetic. It truly is. Mm-hmm. The way this comments revealed this week on a recording of Latino leaders in Los Angeles, three city council members and a labor union leader did nothing to allay those, those fears. Now, you notice they're just Latino leaders in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. okay? Not Latinx, even though most of the people talking were women. Yeah. Hmm. I'm getting tired of that whole... So misgendering now is okay when you can... Well, the establishment is trying to change the public perception of you to white adjacent. Yep. They're already doing that with the Chinese or the Asians. Yep. Oh, it's been like that for a while. Well, we reduce their scores because they do so well. It's not racism, it's equity. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> We know who the real istophobigates are, well, and it's not the people who voted for Trump. Well, one of the main reasons the Asians are doing so well is they have a lot of two-parent families. Yep. I mean, there you go. There you go. Well, they have the, the least amount of single-parent homes. Yes. That's another thing that we handled in that episode. We did the percentage of single-parent homes by ethnicity and then compared it to the median average income. And then those lines are parallel. Asians had a higher income, the lowest amount of fatherless homes. Whites were in the middle. Blacks way down here. 
Absolutely correct. It's about choice and consequence. Yeah, and like they literally want to use emotion to get rid of consequences by ignoring reality. How dare you? What the? How the? F- what? I just can't wrap my head around the clown world. Neither can I. Or that actually makes sense. It's like puking on a pile of shit, my friend. Puking on a pile of shit. Uh, here we go. In the recordings, which we heard, mm-hmm. Council President Nuri Martinez, was, who resigned from the as Council President on Monday and resigned from the Council on Wednesday, offered the most egregious comments. She insulted people in the crudest, most racially offensive ways, comparing a colleague's black son to a monkey and appearing to insult... I don't know, I can't, oh, I don't even know how that's pronounced. I'm People from the disproportionately indigenous region of, Mesi- of Mexico by calling them little, short, dark people who are ugly. Okay. It is what it is. But what disturbs me the most is the racial, ethnic tribalism of her political calculations, because that's totally not what you're doing at all. It's part of human nature. <laughs> it is. Well, the I'll, most listen. Everyone's gonna uh, pack up when when the rule of law goes away. Race is going to be one of the major dividing lines. If you really want to see what racial homogeny does on a demographic scale, or, a, or in a real tangible way, um, take a look at the crime rates in communities that are ethnically homogenous. Really, the fastest way to do this is to look at Europe. Countries like, you know, Sweden or like the really rich parts of Britain that are like 95% who at Supreme Pizza have the lowest crime rates. There's nothing going on there. Yeah. However, you go to Day Twat and you start figuring in things like poverty and entitlement. Yeah, listen, Detroit <laughs> crime rate a, goes through the roof. I've hated Detroit ever since I was able to put two and two together. Yep. Right around five, I was like, that place is a shithole. Never, ever go to Detroit without packing that's right saying it's bad news bears all day long yeah but yeah this this guy's totally he's not engaging in any ethnic tribalism whatsoever because you know it wasn't like he said anti-blackness in the first paragraph Mm -hmm. (laughs) after all the recording is of a meeting to discuss the city's once in a decade redistricting process this is a meeting about power about who can be helped or hurt by how districts are drawn Sounds like somebody's about to go into a voter suppression argument. Yep. Oh, man. On the recording, when former Los Angeles County Federation of Labor President Ron Herrera says, I'm sure Katz and his crew have an agenda, referring to the former state assembly member Richard Katz, who is Jewish, Martinez responds that the Jews cut their deal with South L.A. I don't even know what that means. I don't either. Even more directly, Martinez dismisses one official by saying, expletive that guy, he's with the blacks. Aren't you writing this entire article by saying, fuck these people, they're not with the blacks? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm just... That's quite odd there. I mean, what's good for the geese is good for the pander, right? <laughs> good for the geese. Oh, dude, write that down. <laughs> good for the geese. Good for the pander. I like it. Woo! Oh, that was good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays... Go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat case of books.